If r is a primitive kth root of unity, Gauss defined bracket k to be r to power k. And for any g, the distinct values in this sequence form what Gauss called a period. And these periods are important because the periods form a natural partition of the roots. One useful simplification. If we think of the indices as formed by repeated multiplication by g, we can simplify as we go along. For example, let r be a primitive seventh root of unity, find the distinct terms of the sequence beginning bracket 1, 3. And so we have a sequence where we multiply each index by 3, and so our sequence begins bracket 1, bracket 3 times 1, or 3, bracket 3 times 3, that's 9, and remember, that's really r to the ninth, where r is a primitive seventh root of unity. And because it's a primitive seventh root, we can factor out an r to the seventh and simplify. Or bracket 2. Our next term will be bracket 3 times 2, or 6. Bracket 3 times 6, that's 18, which simplifies to bracket 4. The next term is bracket 3 times 4, that's bracket 12, which simplifies. The next term is bracket 3 times 5 which gives us bracket 1 and takes us back to our starting point. And what this means is that since we're going to form the next one by multiplying by 3, that'll be bracket 3, and our sequence is just going to repeat after that. So suppose bracket 1g generates a period with f terms. Gauss used the notation f one is the sum of those terms, and f lambda will be the sum where all of our indices are multiplied by lambda. For example, suppose r is a primitive seventh root of unity. Let's find the period beginning bracket 1, 2, then use our f lambda notation to express the sum of the roots. Also, let's find f2, f3, and f4. So each index will be multiplied by 2 to get the next index. So our first two indices are bracket 1, bracket 2. After that, we get bracket 2 times 2, 4. Bracket 2 times 4, that's 8, which simplifies as, which takes us back to our starting point, and so these are the only distinct elements. So the period has three elements, and so we can write this as 3, 1 is the sum, bracket 1, plus bracket 2, plus bracket 4. So remember, the effect of changing this second value is to multiply the indices by that number. So 3, 2, we're going to take everything and multiply the index by 2. So that's going to be bracket 2 times 1, bracket 2 times 2, bracket 2 times 4, or 2 plus 4 plus 8. But because we're dealing with seventh roots of unity, this bracket 8 can be reduced. And similarly, 3, 3, we're going to multiply every index by 3 and simplify. And finally, for 3, 4, we'll multiply every index by 4. Now, if you look at these, you'll notice that some of these are exactly the same, although the order of the sum might be different. But if the terms aren't the same, they are completely different. And so f lambda either has the same terms as f mu or entirely different terms. So let's see if we can find those values. So let r be a primitive seventh root of unity. Let's find all the distinct values of 2 lambda. 
Now, since we want to find 2 lambda, we want to find g so that the sequence beginning 1 g has two distinct values. Now, we already found the sequence bracket 1, 2, 4, which has more than two distinct values, so whatever g is, it's not equal to 2. We might try g equal to 3, and our sequence begins 1, 3, 3 times 3, well that's 9, which reduces down to 2, and we already have too many values. If we try g equals 4, the first two terms in our sequence are 1, 4, then 4 times 4, that's 16, which reduces down to 2, and again, we already have three values, which is too many. We try 5, and fail. We try 6, and we see that 6 does work because the next term in our sequence is going to be bracket 36, which reduces down to bracket 1. And so 2, 1, the period with two terms beginning with bracket 1, well, that's going to be bracket 1 plus 6. Now, since f lambda and f mu either have all terms in common or none, and f1 includes the terms bracket 1 and 6, then we can take any lambda not already in a set. So we might find 2, 2. That's going to be multiplying each index by 2, which gives us 2. Now, we don't have 3, so we can find 2, 3, which will be And now we have all powers of our primitive seventh root, and so any other value of lambda would give us a sum we've already found. So why bother? Remember, the periods form a natural way to partition the roots, and if we can make the values of f lambda the roots of an equation, we can solve the equation and find certain sums of the roots without knowing the roots. All we have to do is well, there's a bit more work. We'll take a look at that next.